All right, this is Carlos at AES, and in the office with me today we have Phil Fournier from Phil's Auto Clinic in Hemet, California. Phil is here to tell us why this piercing probe is unique and is different from any other piercing probe you've ever used. Hey, Phil, start off with the, uh, the big knobs there. What, what are those? Okay. Well, uh, I've been fixing cars for 35 years and doing electrical uh, testing, so I've been through uh, use of quite a few different probes, and I decided I didn't like any of them and so decided to come up with something of my own. And one of my criteria was to be able to hold the thing and operate it with a single hand. So what we've done here is we've got a, a fairly large knob on the end and a, a moderate sized knob here in the center and it's smooth. So we can hold it in our hand and with one hand release the springs. I'm going to turn that so you can see better. But you can see the brass shaft there pulls back Thank you, Carlos. And allows you to slip a wire in the slot here. Now, I don't know if our cameraman, uh, George, here can zoom in and get the end of that shaft, only if his camera is better than my old eyes. But I can't see them without my bifocals. But there are five little piercing needles on the end of that shaft. They're put in there with a special press. They're not soldered. That's so we uh, can retain the strength of the needles. So you're saying if those needles penetrate into a dry old wire, which ideally probably you don't pierce in the first place, but if you happen to run across that, those needles are going to be, or will pull out with the probe, they're not going to stay on the car. That's correct. That's been a, a problem over the years, and uh, we believe we have that, that solved. The needles are pretty durable now. We get a good, good life expectancy out of them. They are obviously the most fragile part uh, on the probe. Um, we uh, have my finger over it, but we got a pointed end there, it's a wedge shaped. And the idea is when you got a loom of wires, you can take and poke in between them, go past, and then you pick the wire you want, you twist slightly, and you hook the wire and you pull back. So now you have the, the one wire you want to test captured in the end of the probe. So you let go, and the spring tension pulls it against it, and in case you need a little bit extra, you just grab the knob and give it a little push with the butt of your hand. So all with one-handed operation, you have captured your wire that you want to uh, take a voltage reading on, and uh, now you're ready to go. So you've captured a wire. You, it's easy to connect uh, to wires that are free standing wires, I guess you could say, but it's also designed so you can get into tight, tightly packed wires as well. Right. Obviously, if you've got a taped loom, you're not going to be able to get in there. You're going to have to separate the wires a little bit. But a good example would be an oxygen sensor, which is located often up in a nasty, hostile environment with a hot exhaust pipe uh, nearby. Well, this long probe allows you to reach up there, go in between the O2 sensor wires, and uh, hopefully you've memorized all the wire colors so you know which one you want. But even if you haven't, you can test them all. You loop the one you're going to try and, uh, and allow it to uh, clamp the wire and then you take your, your reading. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got a couple of ways we can take the reading now that we've got the wire, the hypothetical wire, uh, stuck in there. In the back of the probe, which I'm going to hold up here so George can get a shot of that, you can put in either an uninsulated probe or, we've been talking about hybrids lately and the need for uh, Cat 3 level probes, that are going to have a jacket around them because you don't want bare metal, you can uh, put it in there and plug it into the back there and it'll stay very nicely. What I've uh, done myself is uh, sometimes I'll have my lap scope connected to the, to the tail end like that and then maybe I, I would like to have a digital reading so I'll take and I'll clip my clip on there and I've got my voltmeter hooked on now too. So I'm taking a dual, uh, dual reading off of a single probe. You don't have to use two probes. And Carlos asked me to talk about how this has improved. Our first version that I sent to uh, George actually for uh, his first opinion on was back about 1997, I think. I sent him a, uh, uh, a prototype that we had developed and he called me up on the phone and he said, oh, those skinny needles are wonderful. So uh, uh, George actually been very much involved in this and Carlos uh, in the sales side of it for a long time. 
So we've worked together about certain problems we had with the earlier ones, one of which was there is a, uh, a shield inside here. I'm going to unscrew this knob. Uh, we used to have the knob up here that was glued on with super glue, and inside this there is a nylon sleeve that holds the, uh, this is the nylon sleeve, it holds the shaft centered inside of the, of the insulated material, and it also retains a spring that we have in here that retains tension on the shaft. Well, in the earlier version, this glue that held the knob onto the shaft, we could not get good uh, adhesion. Uh, we tried various types of super glue, and we never could get a, a, a positive uh, seal. The knob would come loose, the sleeve would slide up, and those of you that bought them and got frustrated by them, I heard your cries of anguish. And uh, so actually I, I had a friend down in Mexico who said, hey, why don't we thread it? And we'll thread it on there. So that's what we did. We redesigned this knob, cut threads on the inside, and threaded this outside. And now this knob screws down on here, and it does two things. It holds the plastic sleeve in place. Um, as well as giving you the knob on the top to, to push on. So, uh, this has been a really a great improvement. We've been really, really Have pleased. Have you had good feedback so far on it? Without a doubt. I'm glad to hear it. I, I was just up uh, in Oakhurst talking to Dan Walker, and uh, Dan has been, bought two of them from you recently, and he, he was full of praise <laughs> about the new design. Uh, so, uh, this is a definite improvement over, over what we had before, and I'm, I'm real pleased and hopeful that we're going to get a uh, a long life out of because it, it's fairly expensive for for an electrical test equipment, uh, but once you've used one, you really uh, one of the biggest reasons I wanted to reproduce the thing is because I was running out of them myself and I had to have them. <laughs> I didn't want to switch over to something else. That, right. uh, oh, by the way, yeah, one thing I noticed about your probe also it seems to be longer than most probes. How, how long is your probe there? I think we got 10 inches from end to end, and the, the important part, of course, is this here because it allows you to, to uh, get in uh, where other probes may be only about four inches long and you've got to put your hands down into a, a spot that might be hot or uh, greasy mm -hmm. uh, or otherwise uh, not fun. Uh, this allows you to get in there and it, it, uh, it's very useful in spots uh, uh, like getting under a, an air filter assembly and you're trying to grab a wire if you're an old how about, taking like the, how about taking a test drive with the probe? Do, would you ever need to do that? And yeah, do we do that. One thing I try and be careful of when I do that is to not allow the probe to flop around. So I will take a, uh, uh, a, uh, a rubber band or a, or a uh, tie wrap and I will secure it uh, to something stationary under the hood because we do have a little bit of bare surface here which potentially could short a signal. So. Uh, you do need to be careful if you're going to test drive, uh, and also you, the, the the needle is obviously the most fragile part, as we said before, and you don't want to allow weight to hang on. Right. And regarding the needles, uh, most piercing probes have one, say, from large to medium-sized needle. I think your piercing probe is more like a bed of nails. It is. And you have more than one needle in there. How many how many needles are in there, and are are they all the same length? There's five needles. They're all the same length. And the goal is, if you, it will it will accommodate a wire roughly from 10 gauge, you really can't get anything bigger than that in there. And 10 is a bit of a of a tight fit. So 12 gauge on up to about 22. Even a 22 gauge wire, because you have five pins, you got a very good chance of of uh, making contact with the with the um, the conducting wire. So you end up wire. with uh, maybe five holes instead of one. Is that well? Sometimes you end up with more than one hole because, you know, if you have a big wire, you're going to have five holes in it. But, I'll tell you this, you take it off the wire and then you go look and see if you can see the holes, and a lot of the time you can't even tell where it was. Right. And secondly, right. if you have a concern, I know uh, guys like Jim Leonard that are from the salt country, and they recommend use some nail polish to seal up the holes. In California, I have to be honest, I never bother, we don't, and we have no problems. But I, we don't have any salt either, so... Right. I respect those who work in a much more hostile climate than, than we are privileged to do here in California. Right. All right, Phil. Well, thanks for the overview, and thanks for coming in today. Oh, you're very welcome. Hope it could be a help.